Vengeance has never been so beautiful. Heavenly Sword. Rated T for Team. Only on PlayStation 3. Dude, Fuck. Metal Gear Solid. We are oh, going to play God. Metal Gear Solid oh. in five minutes. We are late. Okay. You're the first people to get to play. Do ten, not understand. Ten we, you and Mark. No, we don't have we don't have ten minutes. Here's your newspaper. Get ready. Metal Gear Solid. Okay. I'll be right there. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. Everybody else is at TGS, so we're we're home here. We're gonna let you know everything that you're missing while you're in um, Tokyo. So yeah, let's go. Let's go see what people are doing in the office. Come on, Minnie, let's go see. Hey, Patrick. Hi, my cheats. What you playing? Just rocking some kill zone. Killzone. Just fucking up some hell gas. Nah, Killzone two, baby. Yeah, we, just got we got that preview build of Killzone two. Sadly, we can't show anything, you know, because it's it's so classified. So is it awesome? It's terrible. I mean, we've got so much work to do, and we've got so much to play with everybody at TGS. I, know, I, mean, I heard Skip... Yep, Whatever I heard I Skip got MGS4. Cool. Really? Yeah, I heard he got MGS4, so we should we should go find him. Patrick took the shortcut. What are you playing? I'm just four. Shit, we, we just two. talked about it half a second ago. Yeah, we got in. I don't know. What do you think? It looks all right. Here's a ward. I don't know. I don't know. I think it looks pretty rad, and I and I like all the. Uh, the little mini games. They're kind of like Mario Party. Yeah, you have the, the, the Mario Party stuff and yeah, the stuff with the, 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 stuff. the yeah. Yeah. Battle. all the rhythm based stuff is really cool and um, mini games this time. Like I've only played for 20 minutes so far and I think I'm going to do 10 more minutes and write my review. But but yeah, I, I think the guys at TGS are going to be hella jealous. I know. It's right here. It's right here. It skips desk. All right, well, have fun playing. All right, I'll and, try. Yeah. I think that 
as I walked into that room, I considered, what if I don't like this game? Right. And instead, <laughs> like, I'm worried, what if I don't like Metal Gear Solid 4? Because they, they, you know, they change so much. Yeah. It's different. It's true. But I kind of, you know, I figured that the main thing was, that was going to change was going to be the controls. And, right. You know, of course they're going to answer more questions with this story. It's going to end the entire saga, and that's important. Right. But, like, just to have, like, more... <laughs> Controls where you don't have to hold down like five buttons to yeah, like shoot right. a gun. I mean, that, I mean, that's the great, really what it seems like to me is like the controls for the first time really they said, all right, let's look at what, uh, let's not look at just what old Metal Gear games do. Let's right. look at what other games do. Let's look at like, you know, Resident Evil 4, Gears of War, other first person shooters, Western games. Right. And it has, it, it has those controls. Like, and, it has things from Grawl. Like the fact that when you're, you can press the button and switch to the left and right of right, your gun. Right, like, right, like, right. That's, that's Grawl. seem like weird, I mean that's, square button's pretty good real estate on the controller, like, doesn't it seem like maybe they could have done that in an options menu though? Like, I feel like... <sighs> but you know, they, they've simplified it, they've toned down a lot of things are the same button, like the triangle button is now context sensitive action. And right, right. That replaces a lot of complex combinations you used to have to do in order to like, shoot around the corner, yeah. you know, it's like that. As much as they, they simplified a lot of it, I won't, would definitely not say that the controls are simple. No, no, at all. They were fine and they are simplified, but they're right. still complex compared to some other shooters. You know? Well, there's the, there's there's depth to them because you can do so much. Right. You know, you can you can lay down, which also like they well, kind they, of fix how you lay down. down. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, the problem if you watch someone who wasn't good at Metal Gear, you would see them just like sit like sit down, lay down, be yeah. confused, yeah. not be able to move, and now you know, start to crawl on accident, right. try to get back up and whatever. Now it has the Sam Fisher like yeah, the right. crouch the walk. The crouch walk is useful, and when you're on the ground, you can still move, you can still shoot, you can flip over. You can Play dead. The show floor demo, you have 15 minutes. Which is crazy. Oh, we were there for what? An, an hour, hour and a half. half. An yeah. hour and a half, and I really just felt like at the end, I was starting to learn some of the more complicated things. There are yeah. these combos, they're like timing based, where you like grab the guy, let him go, do this, do that. Like It's almost like a fighting game. And then there's yeah. even parts that are, like the one that uh, from that original Kojima demo, where the, he's patting down, down. that's yeah. like a DDR little mini game where you're tapping yeah. buttons. Right, yeah, you press triangle, like when you're pressing the pocket, and that's the pocket you steal. Like, right, it's right. ridiculous, you know? I mean, that thing where you like knock away their weapon, and also the thing where you like fucking crab grab right. them, like right. that's all like different uh, timing things and like letting go and hitting and doing but that's another the thing, thing. Is like what's awesome about it is you, as a player you don't need to worry about that shit if all you want to do is right. like you know knock the guys out or shoot them like you can do it but there's all this added depth but it doesn't feel like ultra complex it's not the same as like when you were holding down four buttons in MGS3 to like just right. shoot from the first person big thing that all the haters like the fact that it is now easy and fun to run and shoot enemies yeah. We don't have to worry about the controls anymore, and now the the onus is on Kojima to make like the story the good and you know make it make well, other reasons. We didn't get a lot of story in this demo. I think that's no. okay because you know this is the gameplay demo, and like you know yeah, we spent 15 minutes just getting used to the well, controls. And we know? had almost too much story in the in the new trailer. I think like, you, well, you don't like it, do you? No. Well, I I have. I, is it the monkey in the diaper? Is that was that the, the deal breaker monkey. for you? <laughs> no, there's no there's no deal breaker. You haven't changed at all, Snake. People want to forget, you know, things about the older games. It's like, okay, yeah, there's a monkey and a diaper in this game, but did you really, like, did you forget about the guy who, like, senses bombs with perfume and drinks, right. like, shit out of a wine glass? And was on roller Batman? skates. Yeah. yeah. Who's there? Hey, go away! Hey, I'm not done yet!
what I mean by like too much story is like, you know, Metal Gear Rex, Metal Gear Ray, like facing that up fight was amazing. Was the best part of that trailer. I hope that's not the last boss. I hope that is not the end of the game. Right. I, think, All I, I hope it's the beginning of the game, personally. Well, it is funny because they told us like the, the, the our demo is 15 minutes into the game. So I'm gonna be like, well, what were those first 15 minutes? I don't know. You know. Yeah, but then you you clarified. You said first 15 minutes of gameplay, gameplay. or four, first 15 minutes like including cutscenes, and right. he was like, no, 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 there's like way more cutscenes before that. <laughs> <Expect> right. <laughs> It's the frogs. You know, this is also our first time playing the game and seeing the graphics, and you know, I always expect to be a little disappointed because it's been two years since we first saw this, but I wasn't. Like, no. <laughs> I found the, the the level we were in, this Medina level, to be like beautiful, evocative, just like standing still, watching the debris and paper flow by, the clouds yeah. of smoke going with the wind. Not you know, one like, part of it feels like it's pasted in there. You know, it's no sections are the same, no two buildings look the same. Like, yeah, well, everything is it's, totally. It's very different. vertical. There's multi levels. There's tons yeah. of ups and downs, and then you'll, you'll be like snaking across ba balance beams and jumping to this little like ledge, and like a lot of that is like you don't have to do any of it, but it's there. Right. at the beginning of this level, you know, you're fighting these uh, PMC troops and they're pretty easy and, and you have all these cool guns, so you actually get to play with your cool guns and, and have fun with that, but then you fight one of those strikers, it's one of the uh, armor personnel carriers, right, right. and you can't kill it, you don't have a weapon that you can take it out, so you have to deal with this obstacle and get around it, you know, there's different ways to do it, and then later in the level, you get more weapons and then you can take them out, so that's very satisfying. But that's the thing, is like when we played it, we were, you know, so excited to play with the guns the first time that, you know, we just ran in and started shooting, but right. like right around the corner is the stealthy way that you can go, so yeah. Assuming you were like crawling through that area, the striker may not even have seen you. Well, yeah. something something else that I think was a, is a really really good idea that seems like a little thing, but I think it's going to turn out to be a big thing is uh, is playing dead in the game. Oh because yeah. A guy comes around the corner and and you have no place to hide. He's going to see you again. You know your clock is almost ticked down, but he right. finds you again. Okay, this is kind of like if you can get away and nobody's seeing you, then go play dead, like blend into the into the ground, and there's a good chance that you can actually get the, your radar. Down. Right. I think that was the most frustrating thing for me in Metal Gear 1 and 2, maybe not so much in 3, but like once you got spotted, you were kind of fucked. And if Just not, kill only, everybody. only in that, yeah, you either have to kill everyone or you have to wait forever right. to well, go you away. Don't, you know, you don't have the, time, the countdown timer, you don't even have radar anymore, instead you have the threat circle, yeah. which is kind of useful actually, like, I liked it. Yeah, I yeah. like it a lot better. It's a brilliant, like, un, yeah. unobtrusive way. It just like, yeah, it, it, it appears when you need it. Right, yeah. and you can, you can kind of take it or leave it, it doesn't, it's not so like in your face and on top of everything that ruins right. the graphics, but right. it's cool, you know, like little sound waves kind of bump up where the en different enemies are yeah. in, uh, in relation to you. There are other subtle changes, like just giving you a map. Like, you know, like that's kind of, that's a big deal. Like you have a map at all the time, right? right. You come look at your map and see where you're going. What do you guys think of the stress and psych meters? Well, they weren't implemented yet in this really? game. Yeah. It, exactly, I think it's a cool concept and I think it's gonna, I, li I like the idea that um, you get so psyched up in battle that you you take uh, half damage and, and have super accuracy. Right, but that's only when your uh, stress level goes all oh, the way up, oh, right? Yeah. But like, you don't want it to be, it's like, you either want it all the way down or all, all the way, way up. up. Right, like stress is, stress is bad, but if you get t a ton of it at once, you get what's it called, like a battle, battle, battle high. Battle high. Yeah, battle and high. then you're like, yeah, you're invulnerable for a little bit, but ultimately it's bad, and if you get knocked out or go to sleep or whatever, it, it goes back down. You guys, got to play with the, the rumble. Well, they, uh, unfortunately, the rumble wasn't really working in the demo. Okay, the funny part was that so we were doing the demo and and, and Ryan Payton, the producer, was like, yeah, what do you think of the DualShock 3? What do you think of the rumble? And I'm like, it's really subtle. And he's yeah. like, really? I'm like, it's so subtle as to be imperceptible because yes. there is a fucking rumble. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it started working and later. Then it did, yeah. yeah about I half tried half, it. But half of the demo, I was like, Ryan, oh my God, this rumble's crazy because, you know, I played all the rumble controllers. Right. But, so explosions were happening around me like further in the environment and I could tell 
tell where they were based on like what part of my controller was rumbling. Yeah. And it isn't like the DualShock where you feel weight spinning. It's it's different. It feels it, it feels new. It's yeah. new tech. It's totally next gen. I, you know, like right. I think it's better than the Wii Rumble. I think nah. it's slightly better than 360 Rumble. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's not like a how life changing what's, experience. What's right? better Rumble? Like, how does it, it make better? It, what he just Rumble? what yeah, he just it, said. Like, it's directional. It yeah. And it doesn't feel like weight spinning in a controller. Right. It feels like just vibration. Does the 360 controller feel like weight spinning in a controller? Do you? Not as much as DualShock, but the, but it also doesn't feel directional on the controller. Like think about Rumble in stereo. Right, right. Well, and right, also right. like the levels of Rumble from very slow to very strong seemed like a, a broader range. Than right, I'm right, used right. To a yeah. In the beginning of the demo, it's like a little chaotic, but near the end, like shit's hitting the fan, things are blowing up. And like you really do feel unsafe, and you feel like you're in a war torn. Well, conflict. a lot of that is the, the sound design. The sound, well, yeah, the design, sound design is, is amazing. really good. I didn't it's get to like... talk about this in my preview much, but the 5.1, yeah, there's not music throughout. So you you you'll hear explosions in the distance, you'll hear things, then you hear like music wafting in from behind you sometimes. Like... All the soldiers are chattering. Yeah, you know, it's much different than it was in the old Metal Gears, and it reminded me more of even. Several years back, the Medal of Honor in the Call of Duty games had, when you'd be playing a multiplayer game online, instead of just hearing the action of you and the other people you're playing with, there was the sense of the battlefield. Like, the battlefield sounds were always going on around you. And, uh, yeah, to hear it all in 5.1 and with just, like, ultra crisp, ultra clean sound design is just great. It sounds way better than the previous Metal Gears. So when you get the Mark II, that's exciting, but one thing that's changed is that in the first time we saw that cutscene, it was all about you can drive the Mark II with the six axis. No, you no. can't. In right. fact, there's almost no six axis in this game. Yeah, I thought it was also, I think before it was like leaning around corners and stuff. It was there, yeah, but it's not, not there The either. only thing yeah. we had was if you're in a trash bin, right. you, you can raise up out of the trash bin with with six axis. Right. And I bet there will be a few other like tiny instances like that, but when well, you know, Kojima is going to use it for like a ton of weird shit. Right. I like that they're not going but to. But in terms wanna... of core gameplay, not so much. Right. Like when it's mo meant to be there, great at it. Don't build the game around it. Right. But, but the Mark II is fun to drive with just the analog. And oh, yeah. shocking people's fun. Going stealth, stealth is fun. Is fun. Yeah. yeah. He's cool. And you can just bring him up really quickly. He can take a lot of damage. And even if he dies, he'll slowly regenerate. And so. I really like the fact that you don't have to drive it back to Snake. You right. can just you can like turn it off and you're back to Snake. It's like not too much micromanagement, you know. Exactly. What I mean? well, so, so one of the other things that they announced at the uh, at the event before the show was that Metal Gear Online it's actually going to come with Metal Gear Solid well, Four. It's going to come with like a starter. It's pack. called the starter uh, pack, right. which is probably you know a few maps, a few characters to play as. Which you know it makes you wonder like so then do you buy the real game or do you download the full game? But but either way, I got way more excited for MGO after playing MGS Four because it's basically almost exactly the same controls. Right. Like and so those controls work well in a single player game. They're going to work way better in online. And in that new trailer for for Metal Gear Online showed a lot of the stuff that they showed last uh, in July. That's like cool new concepts for like multiplayer multiplayer MGO, like syncing up with your team and being able to see exactly the, the where SO, they are. The SOP system, which right. we finally found out stands for Sons of Patriots. Right, right, yeah, that's right. Connecting. Count on me. Got it, got it. We saw a lot of new environments that aren't even from MGS4. Like right. The sewer levels, some other levels, and that, yeah, that's encouraging. There's going to be a good variety. That right. rooftop level, I thought, looked amazing. It was like a huge upgrade of the rooftop level from subsistence. Right. But it looks yeah. like, it definitely, you know, it looks like the subsistence rooftop. Yeah, right? it you does. Know, you it's like a, it's the revamped version. It's, right, it's the revamped version of that stage. The right? one yeah. thing I'm really worried about in uh, in MGO is, uh, is like, the, the voices. Like, it's, it's the same kind of voices uh, that you've heard in other Metal Gear games. Where it's like, I'm here. What oh, was that noise? Oh, he's someone shot me. Grenade! Ah! Uh, I got you covered. Got it. Oh! Clear! All clear! Awesome! Good work! Sweet! That's the game! Just get rid of that shit. Just normal voice chat is fine. Like, that's yeah. all people need. So after an hour and a half of MGS4, you know, we, we were all quite impressed. And I, I asked 
Yeah, you I asked. asked. You asked. asked. When's this? You guys, I said, are you going to make this demo available? And he said, we would love to. Right. And that's So in my preview, I was like, could you production would like to make this demo available? And I wrote via PSN. And the reason I wrote that is because there hasn't been a demo for PS3 that has not been delivered via PSN. Right. Although, you know, I guess if they really wanted to, they could sell this on a disc. I think it's kind of a waste of a disc. So, you know, we went back and changed that. And, like, I'll be surprised if that's how it ends up being. But I guess they have that prerogative. But and, the they, fact and they've done it in a, that is their history, you know. They right. have always packaged the MG, MGS demo. Or like with a game, though, with a Consumer Productions game. And there is right. no Consumer Productions game coming out this fall. And I would, I would hope this demo would make it by Christmas. You know, like, it's here, public can play it. Yeah. Well, what, what about if it's like a, I mean, they could do lots of different things with it. They could do like a pre-order bonus. That's true. And then, and then have it be on PSN later, or... Yeah. Or, yeah, just as, long, just as long as the general public can play this demo by the end of the year, I, I think that'll be great. Yeah, I don't want to have to buy like DDR hottest party <laughs> in order in order to okay, play. I heard if you, if you buy Let's demo. Yoga, Let's Pilates, <laughs> and beautiful skincare self management, you might get the demo. <laughs> I maybe buy them. The demo's good enough that it might actually be 4,500 yen for the demo. Don't, yeah. do don't, don't give them that idea. Don't, don't say that. No, no. You have to cut that part. Cut that part out. <laughs> anyway, let's. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I kind of want to go play some games now. Yeah, you didn't even go to the show yesterday, dude. No, it's I know. Right here. Let's maybe go. Let's go play some Metal Gear Online. I hear the Japanese people don't know how to play, and they're really easy to kill. All right. <laughs> you got my back. I got your back. All right. Then. Death gives reason for a second. The second lends glory to a third. I say the gods themselves chose to tear these peaceful lands apart, and they sent the Raven Lord to wield that fateful horn. The war lord, thirsty for power like so many savages to follow, and the bloodlust of destruction he unleashed was real enough. But I say he rose from hell. The land you're standing on now was on fire with hatred. Humanity itself disappearing like smoke. Our salvation, our hope, it came from the heavens. A warrior. A man of such might as to challenge even the Raven Lord. A furious king to lead mankind in one deadly battle. A ferocious onslaught. And in this warrior's hand, such a weapon. He gave his life to save our world. But the blood he spilt was forged forever into that terrifying weapon. And so was born the legend of our heavenly sword. And thousands would die for it. Oh, look. David's playing uh, Halo 3. How's the Halo 3 going? Fucking awesome. Were you surprised when uh, at the end uh, Master Chief and Cortana ended up like totally making out? No, it was tastefully done, so I didn't really mind. Yeah, I thought so too. It's kind of moving. Anyway, have fun. I'll uh, I'll see you for some co-op later, maybe. Alright, guys. Later. So we're here at the Microsoft party. Did you guys play anything awesome? Either at the party or here at TGS? You know, I haven't played anything awesome at TGS by Microsoft, and I'm not even sure that they have anything that's awesome this year. Doesn't it feel weird if Mike this year? Like last year, they had like Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey and all that, and then this year just. Lost Odyssey today, I got to see it. Um, 
got to see a demo with, uh, it's like not the demo, but it was more stuff later on in the game, maybe like 10 hours into the game. The max level is like 99, so at the very end of the presentation, I guess they took out their like level 99 party and took it to like one of the last levels and showed us some of the really cool spells that they could do. Like when you cast the spell, it was like an epic, like really nice animations, really cool, you know, color. Skip through them, or is it Final Fantasy S where you have to kind of watch That's it? That's one thing though, it's they only had the one, no matter what spell you're casting, the startup like cast looks exactly the same. So overall then, like what was your like impression of it? Like good? <laughs> this, is, this is the thing, the, the battle looks kind of fun because also the melee, you have this thing called uh, precision aiming where you, uh, when you go for like a direct hit on somebody, it would zoom in with a circle that would focus on the enemy and you time it just right and pull the trigger, you'd get like a perfect hit and it would do better damage than if you like timed it wrong and it would do less damage. So that kind of thing looks really fun. We just haven't seen, I guess, enough of it and I haven't gotten to play it yet so you can't really tell if it's going to be a good one. You guys saw No More Heroes, right? Yeah, me and Rob actually got to see quite a bit of it. It's pretty good, yeah. The combat, it's pretty good. Um, little bit simple though I thought like he has like a lightsaber basically and yeah. and uh you you uh you hit a on the Wemo and he starts like a combo like a rapid sort of flurry yeah. and uh as as like builds up eventually a uh, a, a finishing move will appear and you you uh you either hit down or you hit left or right or up and he'll go into like a almost like a 300 sort of slow motion like finisher move and and then like the guy will just like explode into a million pieces and there's a boss at the, at the end that we saw earlier in the trailer and um, he has a, a really devastating attack that if you don't know how to properly time the block you, you just are automatically knocked to your feet and then he's able to fly away and you can't really attack him and th that's kind of another thing I wish I had a secondary sort of fire where I could almost have like a projectile yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. if that's coming or, or what but um, I felt really helpless. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're going for, but um, yeah, <laughs> it was good. It was fun. Well, that's game. cool. That's cool. So, yeah, but you, you, I mean, you played White Knight Story today, right? Like, oh man, well, you, well, White exactly. Knight Story. You're not going to be just watching stuff. You're going to be totally involved in this game. You saw while I was playing it. It's, what do you think of that? It's really cool. Isn't I thought it? It, I thought it was really fun, especially like the the battle system is, as you were saying, it, it reminds you exactly of. Well, it doesn't even remind me exactly of. I was thinking about Star Ocean, which of course is not a level five game. That's you know that's Tri-Ace, but it still has that same action flow to it. You're, you're controlling one character. You have two other characters that the AI is controlling while you're playing. And what happens when you go into battle mode is this ring fills, and once the ring fills, then you can act. And all of the combat in the level five, I think, is in this idea of let's make let's make an epic game, but let's make it easy for anybody to play it because they don't want. I think they have this idea that you know RPGs have gotten too complex. So this is all one button attack. It's one button to attack and you just have to time your attacks to go through the chains. But where the detail comes in is you get to decide the chains, which after you know we got the explanation, like yeah. it's starting to make more sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does it look as good as like the screenshots and trailers look? Because... Dude, it looks it looks better. It's like we're we're in the, so the the area that you're in is this uh, kind of like a mountain mountain fields and and there's a road. You're you're escorting this wagon up a road, and around the road are these fields that have these flowers and stuff in them. And there's this whole there's this whole like just a little bit of soft filter effect that makes it even more natural. You come up on the stream and you can like see the water glistening, you know, it's like so idyllic. And at the same time, when you get into combat, everything looks really good. That's another part of, of Japanese role-playing games that's always there is having that big grand battle. And that was really cool at the end of the White Knight part, the boss battle. That was awesome. Kind of Evangelion-esque when where you, you Yeah, know. okay, I thought of Escaflown, but yeah, same sort of okay. stuff, right? Because you transform into this nerds. Yeah, <laughs> well, total nerds, but you know, you transform into this like I think uh, he says nine meter tall, which right, is what right. that's like almost 30 foot tall uh, guy in giant armor, the white knight. And you're going to have the, the black knight is like the guy who you're originally going to have as your right. as your nemesis. But you fight a lot of other giant uh, enemies. And that's like a big part of the game, apparently, because if you've seen the video, there's an, an entire city that's traveling on the back. Yeah, you see yeah, that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's that really cool, awesome. right? So I guess part of the big design theory here is that they're going to have this whole uh, sense of scale and trying to make the you know, the size matter, where when you transform into the White Knight, you really feel super powerful. I, I, I felt it, and I like that when you went into the White Knight mode, you were still fighting in the battle system, so it wasn't it wasn't completely different. It wasn't it wasn't like a Final Fantasy summon, where, you know, like you click a button no, and then no, it, it was, goes it was, off. It was even kind of xenogears -ish because you actually have oh, a whole yeah. different mana system when you are the White Knight, too. So it's... it's... In, uh, how about you, Matt? Did you play anything cool? 
Uh, I played two games all day. It was fun. I played uh, Knights and Turok for PS3. Yeah, so let's talk was, about Knights. Right. So we got to finally play it, and it uh, very little of the Wii remote. Basically, you just use that for your acrobatics, but all the controls are on your analog stick and uh, hitting A to kind of boost around. So it's very uh, similar to what we've seen before. It's, it's a little floatier, like the controls aren't as tight. So we'll see if that sticks around or if that's just for TGS. So when you say it's floaty, do you mean it's floaty, like disconnected from the controller, or floaty like the way Knights is, the way the Knights character no, it's, like, it's not anything that has to do with the motion control, which is weird. Like you would think, oh, okay, if they're gonna fuck up Knights controls, they're gonna do it with the motion control. But no, it's 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 just like the way the analog stick works. And I I think that might be because it's early, but who knows? I mean, it's the first time I played it, so uh, yeah, less than ideal, but. Not, not bad, really. I mean, the screenshots haven't looked so good, but I mean, it's freaking nights and it's on Wii. Like, I'm excited about it. Like, I mean, is it any good or is it like, what do you is think? It of shit. It? <laughs> or is it shit? I mean, is it shit? <laughs> you see, I, recently, I think people have been higher on the screen size. Actually, like initially, they were like, okay, this looks like crap. But then, like the last couple batches, they've been like, oh, okay, you know, this game's kind of coming around. I, I think you know the frame rate needs to get there. The the kind of environments need to get there a little bit. But I think tech-wise, it's going to be okay. I don't think that's going to be what makes this, you know, bad or, or good. I think it's going to be kind of the controls and the level designs and kind of the variety you have there. And, you know, presumably some of the stuff we see later in, like, the PR campaign is going to reveal a lot more about the game. So we don't really know what makes this too different from the original Knights yet. Um, but, I mean, there, we've heard enough hints to know that there's stuff coming. So it's, it's right now, it's like, okay, it's getting close to being a good approximation in sequel version of what we used to have. But, you know, I think it's really going to be this new stuff that, that makes or breaks the game. Um, yeah, I mean, did you guys did you guys play any, like, any quirky games or anything at the show or anything? Cause, well, no, because I did. I mean, I played this I played this one called Panapon. Is it Patapon? Patapon. Patapon. And I mean, it's like it—it's really, really. Cr I think it's from the the local Roco people. I mean, it has the same kind of like visuals. Yeah, it all yeah. makes sense yeah. now. It all makes sense now. We know why you're in love. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, no, because I think this to me is actually like this year's Loco Roco. That you know, because last year we found that at TGS, we we're like, oh my god, this game is so crazy, bizarre, but really cool. I think that this is this year's because it's like. I mean, you, the way it works is it's kind of like a music game, right? And you have to like do rhythms on the on the with the you know the, the buttons and stuff. But what by doing that, you're actually controlling these characters that are on screen. They're these like little like villager guys or whatever, you know, like you know, and with spears and you know, and they attack an attack animals and they have to take down buildings and stuff like that. And it's just it's really hard to describe, but like if you like, it's it's just really really fun to play actually because you're you're doing these rhythm. Um, and, and music based, you know, moves and stuff, but you're controlling guys on the screen. And it's just like, I've never played a game like that before. And that was actually one of the best parts of TGS this year, like just playing a game that I've never experienced. And actually, another one that was like that too was Echo Chrome. I played that, you know, the, the Escher style, like crazy, you know, um, game. And, and what I love about that one too is that, like, so you you with the with the the analog sticks you rotate the uh, the, the perspective and the, the map basically and you know so if you get something to like so let's say you've got a um, two two kind of floors that are that that are um, not connected right if you and there's a pillar right if you put the pillar in between them so that the camera can't see the actual gap then your guy can walk through it and then if you like if it's it's all like visual tricks and stuff like that but it's like really really crazy and you you think about games completely different after that like it's you just i mean i again that's a game i've never played before and i, I love it And we lay, we lay together just now Too close, too close And we lay, we lay together just now Too close Thank you, New York! So that's it from home. We're um, staying very, very busy. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, we miss you guys and hope you're taking care of yourselves there in uh, Tokyo. Come home soon. Mm -hmm.